Hello, everyone. Now we're going to look at another horrific case involving you, blind rage. Did you know that as the Christmas season approaches, the number of incidences increases? Crimes, assaults, and robberies. Law enforcement agents report hundreds of crimes over the Christmas and New Year's holidays. What is this fact related to? For starters, the celebrations are accompanied by copious amounts of booze. People lose track of how much they drink and thus obliterate previously established behavioral limitations. Even people who have never perpetrated Christ before lose control. Individuals with mental disorders can also be added to the list. When the attitude of unity, peace, and love pervades all around them, this segment of society feels particularly lonely and melancholy. Sociopaths compensate for their moral failings by engaging in illegal behavior. In this way, people address long-standing internal and external disputes. Ella Edwards, 26, died on January 25, 2022, and her funeral was held at St. Nicholas Church in Wallasey, Merseyside. Several hundred people gathered to see the gorgeous young woman off on her final journey. The young woman's body was transported on a karate catafalque pulled by four white horses. The family's siblings were unable to comprehend her abrupt and ludicrous death, and the cold-blooded crime, which took place in full front of everyone, remained on the minds of worried individuals for quite some time. A man stopped in the parking lot of the Beacon Bar in Wallasey. On Christmas Eve, the local restaurant had a distinct taste and was bustling with activity. For hours, the visitor stared at the establishment's entrance. He believed that now was the best time to exact revenge. Many people's attention would be diverted in the days leading up to the festivities. This meant that if he carried out his plan, he would be able to escape undetected. When the target finally appeared on the horizon, he fired. With satisfaction, the criminal started the automobile and fled the scene. On December 24, 2024, 2022, there was no indication of problems. The city's atmosphere was magical. Everyone was getting ready for the forthcoming holiday. The streets were not overcrowded. Some residents were actively browsing at stores to find missing things. Those who had not yet purchased gifts wandered through retail malls. However, the majority of individuals remained at home with their family. Christmas is a season for gatherings and comfortable company. The Edwards family was similarly caught up in the pre-holiday frenzy. Additionally, everyone was waiting for Lucy, one of the family's daughters. To spend the impending holidays with her family, the girl flew in from Dubai. Her sister Ella was particularly looking forward to Lucy's return. Despite the thousands of miles that separated them, they remained close in spirit of them. They remained close in spirit. When the wonderful moment of meeting happened, the girls decided to meet up with pals at the neighborhood bar, Beacon. They had a terrific time. They danced, sang, terrific time. They danced, sang, Kara Ogden laughed. It was calmer and more tranquil than ever before. However, the widespread merriment was interrupted by loud clapping. Are they fireworks? Someone asked in the crowd. No. Someone's lunacy ruined the celebratory environment. At 11.50 p.m., 12 gunshots were fired at the pub's entrance. The bullets struck five people, four men, and one woman. Ella Edwards had two bullet wounds to the head. Someone who was familiar with her tried to give her artificial breathing, but it was ineffective. Ella's condition was deteriorating. The injuries were really severe. After phoning 911, ambulances arrived at the location of the shooting. After examining the victims, the medics reached a preliminary conclusion. The 22-year-old sustained leg injuries, the 24-year-old was shot in the arm, and the 33-year-old man's wrist was hurt. Ella, 26, and the man, 28, were both in critical condition. The sad woman died on the route to the hospital after losing consciousness. Mrs. Edward's injuries made it impossible for her to live. Ella had spoken with her father just a few hours before the crime. Tim Edwards subsequently remembered, I was busy with Christmas preparations when the police reported what had happened. It came as a huge shock to our family. Everyone who knew Ellie struggled to believe what had occurred. After all, she was so young and gorgeous for her untimely death. Did she truly have ill-wishers in her entourage who were capable of such an act? 
Ella Edwards was a stunningly attractive and pleasant young lady. She worked as a beautician in a local beauty salon and part-time as a dental assistant. Despite her young age, she was well-established and had a respectable income. She was very goal-oriented and didn't want to rest on her laurels. Ella was not denied male attention. Nature rewarded her with exceptional external data. Her friends observed that, in addition to her exterior attractiveness, her inner beauty shone through. She was quite pleasant and optimistic. Miss Edwards' personality enabled her to find calm ground with even the most erratic customers, resulting in a positive relationship with management. The youngster looked forward to a bright future because she loved beauty and makeup. However, life dictated otherwise. There were no hints throughout the initial stages of the investigation. The invader attacked us abruptly as he vanished. At the crime site, he left behind shell casings and bleeding victims. Detectives knew one thing for certain. The attack was premeditated. Police required time to assess if Ella was the intended target of the attack or a random victim. For the most part, law enforcement officers believed the girl was one of the victims by mistake. Detectives spoke with the victim's family to have a better grasp of her personality and the specifics of her life. Everyone spoke highly about the child and, to be honest, didn't understand how someone could have purposely attacked her. According to their remarks, the dead had no enemies. Ella was stunningly lovely. Perhaps there would be people who envied her or desired to be near her. However, the crime is unlikely to have been motivated by envy or jealousy. The Edwards family's statements fueled the police's speculation. The truth is that it is not uncommon in the city to witness conflict between opposing criminal groups. Innocent persons have occasionally been injured as a result of their usage of guns. Afterward, the victims and witnesses to the incident were interviewed. It took a while to check cell phone service. Officers also obtained CTV footage from the pub. The inquiry aimed to evaluate them. The authorities have also contacted the media. They urged anyone with information to help bring those guilty to justice. Above all, this entailed releasing video footage from mobile devices captured on the night of the incident. Any of them could indicate the vehicle in which the attacker came. City authorities met with local people. First and foremost, they wished to support and reassure anxious citizens. The meeting's next goal was to persuade eyewitnesses to provide the evidence they possessed. It was probable that someone witnessed the crime or knew the offender. A group of volunteer activists was formed who went door to door and spoke with citizens. The work did not take long to produce results. It was quickly determined that the attacker had departed the pub parking lot in a dark Mercedes A class. Sec TV cameras also revealed that after pulling up to the institution, the offender waited for some time. Apparently, he was picking the most convenient time to attack. When L and other young people were outside, he opened fire. After that, he swiftly got into his car and sped off. It was easy to determine the time of the crime and that the attacker was alone. However, it was impossible to tell where the intruder fled, so detectives went door to door, interviewing residents. In an attempt to identify the perpetrator, they detailed the vehicle and the circumstances surrounding the occurrence. The city streets were patrolled around the clock. The murdered girl's funeral took place on December 25th. Despite the fact that it was Christmas Day, the venue of the victim's final funeral was closed in honor of the victim's memory and suffering. The Beacon Pub's proprietor published a comment on his social media website, expressing his support for Ellie Edwards' family. On the same day, her father left flowers at the establishment's door. He whispered, my beautiful Elle, the light of my life, you will always be with us. Already on December 26th, two people were apprehended. They were a 19-year-old Rock Ferry resident and a 30-year-old Tranmere male. The woman was arrested on charges of conspiring to commit a felony. Two days later, another Tranmere resident was arrested. The 31-year-old guy was also accused of conspiracy to commit a felony. At the time of his arrest, the two previous arrestees remained at the station. The detainees' names were not revealed due to a lack of direct evidence. All three were quickly released. The authorities were unable to substantiate their involvement in the crime. The residents were outraged by the rampant criminality and the police's inability to control it. 
As a result, the detectives had to give another statement. They stated that the inquiry will continue until the culprit was identified and punished. It was still considered that the shooting at the Beacon Pub was the result of a rivalry between local criminal groups and the unfortunate L, Edwards was viewed as a random victim. On December 30th, law enforcement stated that the three male victims had been released from the hospital and the badly injured 28-year-old's health had finally returned to normal. On January 3rd, 2023, police stated that approximately 150 pieces of data were obtained throughout the inquiry. Among them was some crucial information. It was discovered that the gunshots fired by an unknown individual may have been intended for Jake Duffy and Kieran Salkeld. The lads were members of a local gang. The gang could not coexist in a territory where illegal narcotics are traded with a competing clan. According to information gathered from enclosed sources, the two were observed scuffling on December 23rd. Apparently, the two did not see the battle as a serious danger to their gang. As a result, the bandits decided to take a vacation in Mayak the following day. By their presence, they put the other visitors in the gunman's sights. At the same time, video surveillance equipment allowed authorities to trace down the car in which the perpetrator fled the site of the crime. However, the intruder got ahead of the detectives. New Year's Eve proved to be as tumultuous as Christmas. The police station received a report of a fire near the Beacon Pub. When cops arrived at the area, they discovered a car that fit the description of the sought vehicle. Despite the fact that the vehicle was fully burned out, the analysis revealed its identification. Apparently, the offender was aware that the police were on the trail, so he lit fire to destroy the evidence. It was also feasible to determine that the car had been stolen. The total number of people implicated in L's murder was revealed on January 11th. Edwards climbed to five. Detectives announced the arrest of a 22-year-old man and a 23-year-old man and a 23-year-old woman from Wirral. On January 13th, police announced the arrest of the shooter. He turned out to be Connor Chapman. Despite his youth, the youngster was well known to authorities and the criminal community. He had a long history of robberies, hooliganism, threatening behavior, and aggravated carjackings. The last crime was a big deal, with him making headlines in numerous newspapers. In the current instance, he faces multiple charges. At the same time, the 23-year-old lady in custody was freed on bail. The investigation continues. It turned out that on the afternoon of December 24th, there was a fight between two opposing factions. The cause is a region near a wooden church in Beechwood. The altercation was extremely violent and no compromise was made. Chapman discovered that several of his opponents were enjoying Christmas Eve at a neighborhood business. Instead of spending his first Christmas away from prison in four years with his family, Connor chose retribution. So Ella Edwards was indeed at the wrong place at the wrong time, and Chapman was not acting alone. Investigators discovered the identity of another defendant in the case. It was 20-year-old Thomas Waring. The individual was taken into custody. He was charged with possessing guns, and helping a criminal. A search of Thomas's residence yielded considerable evidence for the investigation. It was a videotape from before the incident. It shows Connor taking up a rifle and claiming he was going to get even with someone. Following the shooting, the culprits hid a stolen automobile. Later, in order to muddle the investigation, they called a cab using an assumed identity. Around 5 a.m., the crooks returned to the location where they had buried the Mercedes. They chose to remove the direct evidence in the case rather than waste time erasing traces. Connor Chapman's identity was criminalized from an early age. He was born in Birkenhead, Liverpool. He was raised by his grandparents. The youngster was abandoned by his parents at a young age because the adolescent studied. Inadequately, he dropped out of school just before his exams. In general, Connor has always been a difficult child. As a result, neither teachers nor relatives held high expectations for the young man. Chapman's first crime was shoplifting at the age of 14. In 2016, he conducted a carjacking. In 2017, another theft was combined with possession of a restricted drug. Chapman has been under police surveillance and subject to restraining orders for the previous two years. 
However, he was more than willing to break the rules. He was eventually regarded a threat to the community, therefore he was denied entry to some areas of the city. In 2018, he breached the prohibition again. Connor was in a restricted area. He also carried a weapon and illegal substances with him. That same year, the public learned about him for the first time. His lame justification for stealing an automobile became a local anecdote. 18-year-old Connor had no intention of staying on the straight and narrow. Last time, he stole an Audi. When a patrolman on the streets of the city observed the stolen car, he told the driver to halt. However, Chapman had no intention of following the officer's orders. He hit the gas with all of his power. He just started a chase. Along the way, the man committed numerous traffic infractions. He ended up colliding with a curb. The car was thrown sideways and whirled around. As a result, the carjacker had to leave the cabin. The runner was apprehended after traveling only a short distance. The patrol caught up to Connor in the bushes. In his defense, he stated that he was expecting a buddy. His sentence eventually became a catchphrase. At trial, the defense fought hard for Chapman's freedom. The defense claimed that the defendant was under the influence of bad company and that he was diagnosed with aid and a variety of other mental illnesses. This report was issued by a private specialist during the trial. The lawyer maintained that Connor was innocent and should be released. Thus, he was sentenced to eight months in juvenile prison. After being released, he was also issued a driving ban. This was a relatively light sentence for a serial offender with 14 convictions for 30 criminal incidents. The young offender evidently had no intention of stopping and defied all society norms. In January 2020, Connor faced another trial. This time, he received a 10-month prison sentence after being found in public with prohibited narcotics in his pockets. After serving his term, he was arrested for five additional charges. At the same time, Chapman boasted about questionable accomplishments. He boldly stated that he had spent more time in prison than on the outside. By the age of 20, he had acquired 19 convictions for 43 offenses. Six months before to the horrible occurrence at the Beacon Pub, Connor was tried again. The lawyer argued that the client had comprehended everything and was now ready to reform. Chapman validated the words of the ruse. The lawyer noted Connor's girlfriend's upcoming birth as one of the mitigating circumstances. Pressing on pity, he stated that the first child was born while the man was in prison. At the time of his last trial, the police were aware that Connor was a member of a gang and sold illegal drugs. However, he was simply charged with burglarizing a house and stealing a couple of electric motorcycles. Perhaps there was some corruption involved in this instance. At the very least, the high-priced lawyer worked off his costs. Amazingly, everyone knew the person was dangerous. Law enforcement officials once issued a statement on television warning the public to be aware of Connor. After committing a crime, he would complete his sentence and be released. It's a nasty criminal cycle. However, there was no compelling basis for Chapman's isolation. Most likely, it was because his acts did not do substantial harm to anyone. The people was outraged by the flaws in the law. It looked that nothing could be done to harden defenders until they injured or killed someone. On June 13, 2023, Connor Chapman's trial began in Liverpool Crown Court. Twelve members of the Edwards family participated. Nigel Power, the prosecutor, announced the charges against the defendant. Chapman pleaded not guilty to all charges. He sought to deny that he had been caught on CTV camera. Connor said that on the night of the incident, he was at home wrapping presents. He was also vague regarding the stolen vehicle. Initially, he denied taking the Mercedes. Connor said the automobile belonged to his gang. Later, he stated that he destroyed it after discovering that one of his associates had committed a crime using the vehicle. Because enough evidence had been gathered, his falsehood was clear. The experiment lasted three and a half weeks. During this time, all of the details of the crime were determined. The true motive for the shooting on December 24 in a local pub was rage and revenge, which Chapman was unable to manage. In reality, he didn't care who got in his way during the murder of Jake Duffy and Kieran Solkeld, members of a rival gang. Before then, he had obtained a Scorpion submachine gun. The weapon could fire around 15 bullets in less than a second. 
Connor stepped into the stolen vehicle and drove to the beacon. He conducted three hours of monitoring before firing the shot. Meanwhile, the security camera showed L.A. cheerfully interacting with her friends. She even left momentarily to visit another pub before returning home with her sister Lucy. At the turning home with her sister Lucy. 11, 47 p.m., the girl returned outdoors to smoke. Unfortunately, she found herself close to Chapman's targets. At the moment, Connor was only in the parking lot. His long brown hair was visible on camera, and his face was concealed by a hood or balaclava. A little while later, as he heeled toward his car to flee, he fired 12 shots. The ensuing wound knocked Ella out and caused her to fall on top of Salkeld. As a result, Ella Edwards got bullets that were not intended for her. Following the attack, Connor planned to travel to Spain, but was apprehended by police at the airport. To conceal their tracks, Chapman and Waring set fire to the automobile and destroyed the weapon, which was never discovered. However, traces of Connor's DNA were discovered on one of the cartridge casings, implying that the defendant loaded the gun before firing. During the investigation of his home, red gloves were discovered that were plainly seen on the pub seats TV tape. They were also determined to contain his DNA. All of these data tied Chapman to the atrocity that occurred. By the way, while the culprit was awaiting punishment, both of his attack victims were in prison. Tim Edwards was given the opportunity to speak before the jury of, of five men and seven women began deliberating on the judgment. He said he had been forced to examine CTV footage prior to the trial. It's terrible to see your daughter die and not be able to stop it. I'll never forget it. The father reported that Ellie was on the street with her back to her offender. He further stated that if the gunfire had come six inches higher or to the side, his L.A. would still be alive. Ella's father hoped that the ultimate verdict would be fair and that the offender would never again be able to spend Christmas with his family while on the run. It took the judges three hours to reach a unanimous ruling. On July 7, 2023, Connor Chapman was sentenced to life in prison with a 48-year parole period. The Edwards family was relieved that the cold-blooded killer would be incarcerated for the rest of his life. The criminal committed the crime with cynicism and had no intention of repenting. The trial established that the bar shooting was the result of a conflict between the Wood Church and Beechwood Estate gangs on each side of the M53. Thomas Waring was likewise found guilty of all allegations brought against him. The court condemned him to nine years in prison in the same month. The lad, unlike Chapman, had minimal criminal experience, which likely contributed to his short sentence. The people was outraged. Innocent persons were once again involved in criminal confrontations. They were even furious because potentially deadly gang members were frequently sentenced to short prison terms. Courts utilize prohibitions as supplementary sanctions, which have little effect. This was notably clear in the instance of Connor Chapman. The lad was prohibited from being on the premises where the tavern was located, as well as from driving. They were ineffective in ensuring public safety. The death of L. Edwards was proof of that. The incident emphasized the necessity for a revision of the current legislative framework. Furthermore, the bold attack emphasized the issue of handgun availability. Following multiple such deaths in the county of Merseyside, the government has set aside $350,000 to launch a trial initiative. It is connected to a reduction in gun crime in the region. Tim Edwards also announced the creation of a fund to help victims of gun violence. One of the primary priorities of national authorities of national authorities should be to minimize the number of firearms in the hands of individuals and criminal organizations. Father L, he voiced his opinions. He further stated that carrying guns, especially among minors, is becoming the norm. The younger generation is very sensitive to what they see and hear. Mr. Edwards noted that during his upbringing, he never heard of any of the kids picking up a gun, let alone knowing where to buy one. According to him, everyone in today's culture is quite vulnerable. People are not safe any place. An attack can occur in a private residence, on the street, or in a busy location. A notable example of this was the Christmas Eve party at the Beacon Pub in 2022. Elle should have felt joy and warmth at this celebration. Edwards developed into an irreversible disaster. Thank you for watching, gentlemen. Subscribe to the channel 
there will be many frightening stories ahead.